Good morning, everybody. It is morning here. Thanksgiving morning, as a matter of fact. We are going to do something a little bit different today on Paula's Kitchen. In fact, so different that I borrowed Chef Dale's apron because this is serious business. When we do turkey and pumpkin pie, we need to get down to business. No frills. So what we're going to do today on Season 2, Episode 7... <laughs> We are going to make Thanksgiving dinner from scratch. I'm not giving you recipes. We're just inviting you into the kitchen and you can just hang out with us throughout the day as we make all the dishes for Thanksgiving and have dinner at the end. I wish you could just join us, that's all. So starting up first will be pumpkin pie. We're gonna get going on that right now. We are going to make the original Libby's pumpkin pie because you know what there is nothing better so I just make it off the label what I did was I just measured out the ingredients for a simple single pie crust we're just going to do that it was out of my Betty Crocker cookbook so I know there are fancy things to cut the shortening into the flour but you know what guys I just don't bother with it I have been doing it this way ever since I was a young one <laughs> I just cut the shortening in until it's about the size of peas. Let me get this done. We'll be rolling this out very shortly. So a couple minutes went by and I have cut in my shortening into the flour mixture and we're ready to sprinkle in a little bit of cold water. A couple tablespoons. Again, this is just the traditional single pie crust recipe. Meanwhile, I turn my oven on to 425 degrees Fahrenheit because the beginning baking of the pumpkin pie is at 425, and then we turn that temperature down. So I'm stirring this up with a wooden spoon, and then if it doesn't start to form a ball, I will sprinkle another tablespoon of water, and most of the time I do need to do that. I, I mostly have to use three. So... Sprinkle that guy in, and that's going to do it. So I am going to pour my pie crust out, and we are going to roll it next. All right, you guys, a couple of cook's tips that I've learned over time. I'm a big fan of Tupperware. I know it's old school, but you know what? It's good stuff. I got this baking mat a million years ago, and it has diagrams for a nine inch pie crust. I could not live without it. Second tip, if you lay down a piece of wax paper over top of it, roll your pie crust on the wax paper. It makes it super easy to pick it up and put it in the pie pan. So two winner winner chicken dinner tips for you. Okay, so what I have done is I um, have floured my piece of wax paper and I'm going to pour my crust out. I am, contrary to what Durango says, I am not the greatest pie baker in the world. Pie crust stymies me, frustrates me, <laughs> and that is a fact. <laughs> my pie plate is an old, 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 at least it's an heirloom to me. It's from Longaberger Pottery in central Ohio. Obviously, you could tell by looking at it, it is well used, but it's my traditional pumpkin pie plate. All right, I wrestled this into submission <laughs> and we clean up a little bit of that flour mess. It's challenging doing this at the stove. Normally I do it on the sink, but lighting is better here. All right, you guys, I have my nine inch round and what I'm going to do is pick it up and it, again, it's on the wax paper. So I'm going to drop it into the pie plate and you're gonna have a little bit of room to wiggle here because it sort of holds together. All right, and then I just flute the edges. There you go, such as it is. Be right back with filling. Getting ready for my filling again. Right off the Libby's label, we are going to start with two eggs and we're going to just beat those with a whisk by hand first. So let me do that. Not a lot of ingredients in pumpkin pie. It's just the pumpkins that come through. So there we got some nice fluffy eggs. 
me start putting my pumpkin in. Years past, I actually had occasion to make pumpkin pie with fresh pumpkin. That's a lot of work. <laughs> all right, next goes all of my wonderful flavorings and spices. That is sugar and salt, cinnamon and ginger, and cloves. And then the last step is to drizzle in the evaporated milk a little bit at a time so that it incorporates and gradually thins this into a custard. My filling is ready, creamy, pumpkin-y, and I'm going to pour that into my crust. So this Libby's recipe is a, you bake at two temperatures. We're gonna do 15 minutes at four and a quarter, which basically bakes the crust. And then we're going to do about 40 minutes or so at 350 to finish it off and bake the filling. So in she goes. And for those of you watching the clock, it's right around 10 a.m. here. I always worry about sloshing that, but we are good to go. All right, we're gonna start prepping turkey and sides and so on while this is in the oven. See you in a minute. A Little bit of time has gone by. I turned the oven down to 350 on the pie, so that's moving along fine. Now we are going to prep our dressing, stuffing. I don't make stuffing from scratch. I make whatever the grocery store has. They have Mrs. Cubison. Sometimes I use Pepperidge Farm. Um, it's delicious and we're perfectly happy with it. So, step one, I'm going to drop a stick of butter into my frying pan, and I'm just gonna make it according to the directions. Thanksgiving is not a time to skimp, you guys, so yeah, it takes a stick of butter. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> so we're going to flavor our stuffing with one cup of celery and one cup of onion. Just the very traditional I know there's a million variations on stuffings, and I've certainly had them in restaurants. They're all wonderful, but I don't know. I do what my mom did. <laughs> my butter's ready. Pour in my vegetables. And a nice sizzle going on here. And I'm just going to saute these for a few minutes till they start to soften up a little bit. And then it calls for a cup and a half of chicken broth. So while those are sauteing, I'll go ahead and measure that out. Let me check. I think it's a cup and a half. Let me make sure. Yes. All right, you guys, I will saute these. I will Put my broth in and I'll be back when it's time to dump the cubes in and we're just gonna fluff it and it's done that's all there is to it it's actually going in the bird as I said I do what my mom did I put the stuffing in the bird and whatever's left over I kind of uh, roast it in a pie pan and stir it all together you'll see that later on today the smell of butter celery and onion is an amazing thing too. <laughs> All righty. Next up, we're heading over to the sink. I got a butterball turkey this year. Some years I do a Jenny O, but this year I got a butterball. I've just got it all rinsed and I'm just pulling it out of the sink. I took out the giblets and the neck and I'm gonna put those in the fridge. We're gonna use those for a giblet gravy in a little bit. So it's just He's really a nice looking fella. I'm just going to kind of dry him off a little bit. But my mom used to wrap the outside of the turkey in bacon. And we would bake it that way. And the bacon would sort of baste it as it cooked. I have many brothers and sisters. You cannot believe the fights over who was going to peel off the bacon, which of course pulled the skin off with it when it was done. It was so amazingly good. <laughs> okay, guys, I am going to put some of my beautiful fragrant stuffing in right here. 
And I have a little wooden skewer that I'm going to close this cavity up with. And I'm just going to put my skewer in to hold it. It's like sewing. <laughs> and then just break that off. Okay, that'll hold that in place. Now flip him back over and stuff the inside. Again, just very lightly. I absolutely love the flavor that the celery and onion impart to the turkey when the stuffing is actually inside it, which is one of the reasons I do it. <laughs> All right, that's enough, I think. And my turkey is pretty much ready to go. Like I said, it doesn't matter what your crust looks like when your filling looks like that. How beautiful. Alrighty, my oven goes down to 325 because my turkey's going in there. Timing has been impeccable on this because no sooner did my turkey, uh, my uh, pie come out than my turkey is going in. And I do not cover my turkey with bacon. I cover my turkey with a nice quality olive oil. That is it. I don't, again, I don't use any seasonings or basting or anything because the wonderful flavoring is in the stuffing. So, in he goes. It's a beautiful thing. Bye, we'll see you in a few hours. Whew. Taking a break. We'll be moving on with side dishes and so on as the day goes on. Two hour check. Let's see how Tom Turkey's doing in the oven. Moving along. See what I told you about that crusty stuffing? Ooh, makes me want to taste it already. Let's baste this baby, huh? Actually, I need one of these on. Let's see if I can grab some juice. And just give this a little bath. Oh, man. Cameraman, how does this smell? It's driving me nuts. <laughs> All righty, back in the oven. <laughs> Oh, that is glistening beautiful. Okay, next up, as I said earlier, I make giblet gravy. So I put my giblets in a saucepan with just some cold water and I'm going to throw some vegetables in there and a couple things. And the only purpose for this is just to make a really flavorful gravy for the turkey. I've got the giblets minus the liver. I don't use the liver. I'm gonna throw in one chicken bouillon cube. There it is. And I had opened this uh, chicken broth earlier, the Swanson, so I'll just throw that in. Might as well. And then it's basically I'm making a fresh stock, so I'm going to use some aromatic vegetables to flavor it. I've got a stalk of celery and some celery tops because celery tops make wonderful flavor in broths and soups. I've got a few carrots and I've got about a quarter of an onion. So I'm just gonna throw those in. The only purpose for this is the liquid so I can leave them all whole. And then the last ingredient, I'm gonna throw in a few peppercorns for some pizzazz. There we go. All right, I'm gonna put that on to boil and then I'm just gonna simmer it all the way until I'm ready to make the turkey gravy a couple of hours from now. Through the magic of video, about an hour and a half has gone by. I've basted the turkey a couple times, and now it's time to talk about side dishes. I like to go traditional with my Thanksgiving side dishes. So starting off with some fresh red potatoes, I'm going to dice those, boil them, and make mashed so we can enjoy our turkey gravy. I also really like yams with Thanksgiving dinner. Sometimes I make whole ones, but in this case, I bought some canned sweet potatoes, and I'm just going to give them a little bit of a candied treatment with equal parts butter and brown sugar, a quarter cup of each one, and we'll just boil those up gently. And then I always like a pretty plate. I like greens 
In this case, we have some beautiful fresh Brussels sprouts from the grocery store. We're going to steam those in the microwave and then finish them with olive oil and garlic, one of our favorite treatments for Brussels sprouts. It's been about four hours, and although this butter ball is not equipped with a timer, it's done. Let's grab this baby, and then we will continue with our foodie adventure here with the side dishes. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Check that out, my little Turkosaurus. Look at that. <laughs> here, I'll let the overhead camera just uh, grab a look at that. This other uh, little pie pan is my extra stuffing that I told you about. It's in the oven right now. So behold the masterpiece. Gorgeous. We'll be taking pictures shortly. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna set this aside and put a tent of foil over top of it. Let it relax for 10 or 15 minutes. You're gonna try to do this your All yourself. right, guys. Yeah, because my cameraman is behind the camera. So let's see if we can do this. And success. Oh, Paul, you did it. Look at that. Hold on, let me get a yeah, there you go. All right. All right, everybody, we are in the home stretch. Off camera, I took my diced potatoes off and I made mashed. Set those aside. Let me grab my wonderful uh, giblet grape or I guess I'll call it uh, a stock yeah my okay. giblet stock throw that in and I want to get all my wonderful drippings out of the pan of course and this is a two burner job so let me turn them both on yeah all right let's get those boiling and I just use a very very traditional flour and water half and half thickener. And if you're looking in the overhead camera, I leave all the little pickings in the roasting pan until the gravy is made. And unlike a famous line in one of our favorite holiday movies, Bridget Jones's Diary, my gravy in fact does need sieving. <laughs> and here we go. I'm going to pour the flour and water thickener into the gravy, stir it for a while, bring it to a boil, and boil it gently for about five minutes to blend the flavors, and we will be ready to get our bird on the table. Wow, that was great. It was. I'm full already. Man. So many hours to put it together. It was so quick to it eat it. It was just terrific. You did a great job. <laughs> uh, we're not expecting anyone. No. I don't know. Let me get it. Alright. Whoo, my tummy's full. Oh, it's you. Where have you been? So, cousin, cousin Durango, where have you been? It's been since mid-October, Knott's Berry Farm over in California. We have not seen hide nor hair of you since. I was at Knott's Berry Farm, and I heard Paolo was going to make some pie. So it took me a long time to get here, but I made it. I took the Greyhound bus. I walked a little bit. I had to do a little bit of work, but I finally made it, and I'm here. Durango, you're in luck today. I have pumpkin pie, fresh made this morning. I've been waiting for a piece of pie in this house for eight long months. That is the best 
pumpkin pie I've ever had with a glass of milk. Nice job, Paul. All right, you guys, Thanksgiving is about inviting people into your home, and I can't imagine anyone I'd rather have had at our table today than Durango Dale. He enjoyed that pie, and now he's filming us. What a guy. It helps to have that third person sometimes. All right, I already took a bite, <laughs> but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show the pie to you if you can see it. And I do use Cool Whip for a shortcut. I have made real whipping cream in past years, but you know what? We love Cool Whip. It's a shortcut and I'm good with it. Let me give it a shot. It goes great with pumpkin pie. Oh, that is so I good. I feel like I earned this today. <laughs> I absolutely love this. Do you know that we started this early about eight o'clock in the morning and now it's close to five o'clock at night. We have done nothing. Well, she's done the cooking. I've been doing nothing but setting up lights and making sure the cameras are all working and everything. So this was a long, long day, but well worth it. The food was terrific. And hopefully we're going to have a fun Thanksgiving Eve video for you when all is said and done. I hope we do. <laughs> and we just want to wish everybody a very, very, the, all you folks in, in the United States, a very, very happy, happy, safe, Thanksgiving Day, and I hope that you have a wonderful time with or without your family, however you have to be uh, uh, doing it in, in these kind of times that we're living in, right? I just hope it's tasty. Whatever you put on your plate, be thankful for and enjoy. <laughs> and we're also happy that Durango Dale's back, right? We are. We miss that rascal. <laughs> All right. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button and follow us on social media. Absolutely. And one more thing, if you were thinking of doing some shopping over the upcoming Cyber Weekend and anything from Las Vegas Inside and Out merch was on your list, we do have a discount code for you. It's good right now through December 1st. We'll put it on the bottom of the screen. It's LVIO save 10, save 10% on anything you buy on our Teespring store. Sounds like a great idea. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Happy Thanksgiving, bye, bye, everybody. everybody.